let's talk today about acid reflux and celiac disease. Often, both conditions exist together. If you have a celiac disease, it's a very good idea to fix the celiac disease first. Why? Let's go to the blackboard and I will explain you because knowledge is power. I already pre-drew for us picture of the digestive tract as always. Here is the mouse. Food will go here, esophagus, loisophageal sphincter, stomach, pillarus, small intestine, liver is located here, will produce juices and they will drain into small intestine. And here is P stays for pancreas, will produce pancreatic enzymes. Also will drain here into small intestine. Celiac disease by definition is inflammation in the small intestine. Let me draw a big picture. So small intestine has a lot of villi in the normal, under normal circumstances. The purpose of those villi is to produce brush border enzymes and it's actually lined by cells and they will produce enzymes right here and the food will be broken down further by those brush border enzymes. And then uh, broken down food will get absorbed into the villi and will get released into the bloodstream. And this is your bloodstream with the food and eventually will go inside the individual cells. So in celiac disease, due to gluten intolerance, the villi will deteriorate. As a result, the brush border enzymes are not produced. As a result, person will have a lot of inflammation right here in the small intestine. In several previous videos, I already talked about physiology. When you put the food inside the stomach, it will drop here in the mouth, it will drop here in the stomach and you will start to produce hydrochloric acid, HCl, and the pH in the stomach will be created. Acidic, it's too. At the same time, the enzymes, brush border enzymes, are produced in small intestine. Liver, a liver will start to produce bile, and pancreas produce pancreatic enzymes. And you will create a very specific environment here in the small intestine, with the neutral pH is seven. It is paramountly important to create those two conditions. So specific environment here in the small intestine and in the stomach in order to open the pillarus. So the food will move from the stomach into the small intestine. And then once when the food arrives here, it will send the signal back into the stomach, stop producing hydrochloric acid. If you don't create this environment, pH seven, in the small intestine because of autoimmune condition, then the pillarus is not open. Then the predigested food and hydrochloric acid have no place to go. It's not going to here because pillarus is closed. And only place to go is back into esophagus, creating inflammation, which is acid reflux right here in the esophagus. Now you understand that if food does not move, out of the stomach, then you cannot solve the problem with acid reflux. So solve the problem with celiac disease. So patients with celiac disease often have digestive complaints, but not always. They also can have skin presentation as a dermatitis herpetiformis. Sometimes patients presented in the practice without digestive complaints, only with the skin. It uh, could be mistaken in the office for eczema, psoriasis. The skin presentation could be on the legs, on the knees, on the elbows, on the lower back. But classic bookcase presentation is on the hands. And it looks exactly like that. I had several patients in my practice. They did not have digestive complaints whatsoever, but they have a, had a skin presentation. And it was mistakenly by... Uh, dermatologist uh, treated as a eczema or psoriasis with zero effect uh, with corticosteroid creams. So gluten intolerance, 
let's go and start to deal with that. Step one, you need to learn about elimination diet. I have this video on my site where I talk about that. And I also talk about wheat, egg, and nuts intolerance. But for you, is most important is wheat, to eliminate wheat because wheat will have gluten. In step number two, you take a project and you learn about the label. This is an example of the label. You need to read in small print what it contains. In this case, it has Alaskan salmon, all triglycerides, mixed lemon flavors, which is chemicals. You don't know what kind of that, but they are there. And uh, non-GMO vitamin E. When you look on label, you are looking for these ingredients. It could be named as a wheat protein, vegetable protein, wheat starch, bleach flour, also grains such as bulgur, malt, couscous, farina, and satan, they have gluten. They have to be eliminated. So this is a, a simple example of the food uh, that has no wheat and gluten. The basic should be some kind of broth with chicken, beef, pork, or fish. Then you add their vegetables and you cook them. You want your food cooked because when you have inflammation in the digestive tract, digestive tract need the rest. And resting means to break, help it to break it down. So break it down the food with cooking. So all fruits and vegetables have to be cooked. Here is an example of your carrot, zucchini, broccoli. Then you add there in your stew or soup, pre-cooked complex carbohydrates. Here is example of non-wheat and obviously non-gluten uh, whole grains, such as quinoa, amaranth, sorghum, uh, buckwheat, teff, corn, and there are different kinds of rice. There is a white, brown, red, and wild rice. And then you second they used to a little bit with different flours like corn, tapioca, arrow, potato, and their salt, and um, olive oil. You want to keep food simple because you need to keep a diet diary. Here is one more example of um, interesting breakfast, uh, eggs, vegetables, brown rice, and salt. Again, if you will incorporate into your food something from the jar or from the can, when you will start to read labels, you may find out that there are a lot of ingredients that you don't know. So you cook your food, the simpler, the better. The next step is, something to put on the bread. This is not your regular bread, it's the kale bread. You can use a rice cake. And then you put uh, any kind of butter, like sunflower, um, peanut butter, cashew butter, and then you add on top cooked fruits and vegetables. This is example of diet diary. Let's say it's day four. So you, you, you change your diet and here is your breakfast, which will have Ezekiel bread, times two with almond butter and cooked apples. On the right side of your journal, you write symptoms, how you feel. And don't write how you feel. I mean, you write your clinical symptoms. I want to know what kind of changes are taking place as you eliminate gluten out of your diet. For example, after breakfast, you become slightly bloated. At the end of the day, you write, a stool is regular, there is no more diarrhea, uh, formed, less, less bloated, skin still has dermatitis herpetiformis, however, it's become less red. As you start to treat celiac disease, food will start to move from the stomach into small intestine. As a result, you may find out that you actually have less acid reflex. Your acid reflex disappear, or you have, let's suppose you have, you know, 20 or 30%, you have occasionally acid reflex. Then what you do, you go to the next step, number five, and see this video on my channel, where I'm talking about big picture plan, how you diagnose and treat acid reflex, and you go straight into the step three. So where you actually, think, okay, I have an acid reflex now, obviously, I need to identify, do I have a normal production or do I have a low production of acid reflex? And you do a test with baking soda and you will take you know, from there.
Okay, guys, I hope it's clear. Uh, if you need a health coach, contact me. Uh, like, subscribe, ask me questions right here. Bye-bye for now.